been another week of twists and turns in the fiasco which is Brexit. As the UK Parliament returned to the business of Brexit on Monday, Prime Minister Boris Johnson looks like he has lost control already. In this episode of the Bible in the News, we review the week and remind ourselves of Bible prophecy in relation to Britain and the EU. On Tuesday this week, the UK Parliament took control of the parliamentary agenda. Holding sway, Remain MPs passed legislation to prevent a no-deal Brexit, forcing the UK Prime Minister to either have a deal in place before the UK can leave the EU on the 31st of October, or alternatively, to request a further delay to Brexit until January the 31st, 2020, if there is no withdrawal agreement approved by October the 19th. Mr Johnson stated on Thursday that he'd, quote, rather be dead in, in a ditch than delay Brexit, end quote. He has stated he will not ask for a delay to Brexit from the, U, from the EU. The bill is likely to be passed by the House of Lords and therefore receive royal assent required for it to become law before Parliament is suspended next week. This dramatically weakens the UK negotiation position and could derail any deal that is currently being worked on. Ironically, a few months ago, you may recall Theresa May took a deal to Parliament on several occasions only for their MPs to vote against it. Also this week, the Conservative Party lost its majority, meaning it is even more difficult for them to pass any future legislation. On Wednesday, Boris Johnson then called for a snap election in order to remove the gridlock in Parliament. But this was also rejected by Parliament. His hand is truly being forced into either creating a deal or delaying Brexit once again. He has, it seems, completely lost control. Although there are some extreme measures open to the new Prime Minister in order to have a general election, it looks like an almost impossible situation. Being pushed into a corner, though, may make him take extreme measures. Apparently, Mr Johnson could, for example, force a general election by calling a vote of no confidence in his own government. If he did this, and then actually managed to win with a majority parliament, this could lead the way to repel the legislation preventing a no-deal Brexit. At this stage, however, many people in the country who voted to leave are asking where this leaves democracy. The people had voted to leave, but it seems their leaders are unwilling to fulfil this desire. We will wait to see what further twists and turns come about. But it is telling that in the midst of this political turmoil on Thursday, Boris Johnson still found time to meet with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and US Vice President Mike Pence. Boris Johnson and the Israeli Prime Minister talked about peace plans and about the threat of Iran. The Jerusalem Post reported that Mr Netanyahu had stated, quote, I want to say that you've been a great friend of the Jewish people and Israel. I applaud your staunch stance against anti-Semitism and your support for Israel's security, Netanyahu said. Our relations are at an all-time high, economically, trade, technology, defence cooperation, these are all great things. It's not that we lack challenges. We have the challenge of Iran's aggression and terrorism, and I'd like to talk to you about how we can work together to counter these things for the benefit of peace, end quote. With Mike Pence, the conversation was reported to be about trade with the US post-Brexit. Mike Pence tweeted after the meeting, quote, as soon as Brexit is complete, we look forward to having a new free trade agreement that will make the ties that bind our nations together even stronger, end quote. So what does all this have to do with the Bible? Well, as we have covered many times in past Bible in the News episodes, we believe that there is compelling evidence that suggests that Britain is mentioned by an ancient name of Tarshish in the Bible. For example, see June the 8th edition. In the grand prophecy of Ezekiel 38, 
we have a picture of the state of the nations of the world just before the Lord Jesus Christ returns. Tarshish is mentioned as being separate from an aggressive European, Russian and Iranian alliance. She is instead engaged in trade in the area of the Gulf with her political offspring called young lions in the prophecy. We believe that these young lions answer to the independent political offspring of Britain, America being one of her chiefest young lions. The aggressive alliance of nations is depicted in the prophecy as coming against Israel. Tarshish, though, is not against Israel at this time. Therefore, in the events this week, with Britain speaking peaceably with Israel and talking trade with the US, we see glimpses of the prophecies coming to pass before our eyes. However, we still have the big question of Brexit. We do not know all the twists and the turns, and no doubt there may be more before the Lord comes. But the end state of the allegiances the nations will form before the Lord Jesus Christ returns seems clear. Britain's role is not to be in an alliance with Europe. Her destiny lies apart from the EU project, with its plans for further integration and an EU army. So we watch and we wait to see how the angels will work things out to bring about the prophecies of the scriptures of truth. And we gain comfort in the signs of the times and know that they do indeed herald the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to the earth very soon. How humanity is indeed in need of a righteous ruler to govern their affairs and lead them effectively. In the prayer of Psalm 72, we join with the inspired writer who states, Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. The psalm ends with the praise of God. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things, and blessed be his glorious name for ever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Ultimately, this is the grand purpose of God, outlined in his gospel truth. And we look forward to that time when indeed the whole earth will be filled with the glory of God. And the era which we live in now, when it is filled with unrighteousness, wickedness and the false promises of democracy, will be over. This has been Matt Davies joining you for another Bible in the News. Join us again next week as we continue to watch the dramatic twists and turns of the signs of the time.